How you doing, everybody? This is Craig. Craig's just kind of out of repair. Making another video here. Okay, I got a uh, 86 Fiero. Man, you know how long it's been since I touched one of these? And all the information, all the, I'd say information, it's wrong. All the uh, repairs I've done on these cars over the years in the past, in the 80s and mid 90s and stuff, uh, brought back good memories. I had a lot of fun back in before that thing ever crashed. So I'm under here doing a fuel pump and I got to do a clutch right now. And I'm going to crawl underneath here and I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to show you something that I seen. Now the car come in on a rollback. And they said it ran. <laughs> now I'm not being belittling the customer because he's a nice lady and her daughter, you know, there's, but it didn't run. The car didn't run because wait till I show you what I discovered, why this car hadn't run. Not only that it has not run, it ain't run in years. But I think it's a good car once I get this problem fixed, solved, and we get the new parts in. So we're going to walk over here for a minute. So what we got to do is we got to do a fuel pump. I told her it was on a fuel fuel pump, burnt hot. I got to put the, the pieces on it, whatever, you know, the wiring and the, the gasket and so forth. And then fuel pump relay. I'm going to do a relay because... When you get when you crank these cars over and it's old relay, you, when you got a new pump, you want to have at least decent voltage. That way, you can eliminate any problems that come up that may uh, come up with uh, later on with wiring and the heat, and because it's an old car, so I always do this. I always try to rule number one. I always replace relays and fuses. So we're gonna do a fuel pump relay. I uh, put a new filter in it. filter was clogged 100. It was like 60, 70 percent restriction. I got to do a clutch next. So I got to do this clutch. So I'll be doing a clutch here and then after I do this. But let's take a look at, get a back view of the car here. Let's take a look at, I got to hold the motor. So this tool here holds the motor if you're not familiar with that. So you don't need this. You can use wood, but I use this because that way I don't bust the map sensor or anything or scratch the nice paint. You know, they all know it's dusty. So use this tool here to hold the motor up. I mean, it's not a bad looking car. I've done, I don't know, and the time I worked on these, I've probably done, I'm going to guesstimate at least 12 or 13 clutches. Maybe more, because Morak, he, uh, Morak Auto Sales, he buy these all the time, send them over to me. And a lot of them, every one of them, just about, or a lot of them had clutch and brake problems. It's got new rubber on it. That's a neat little car. So, yeah, you know, the master stones up front. They replaced all this. They charged this lady over two thousand dollars to do these brakes and i told her i said i could do i could have done all the brakes the master cylinder the proportion valve doesn't look like it's been changed but they put new lines in there and <clears throat> that proportion valve might have been changed i don't know but i could have done all the brakes for like 12 1300 bucks she paid she, she paid i think 22 2400 dollars i could have done them for 13, 14, maybe 15, depending on how bad it was. The lines, I got underneath and looked at the lines. I don't see any brand new lines. So they didn't change the lines, but they uh, charged her premium prices to do that. And I said, well, if you want to take a risk with me, you, you buy the parts, I'll do the labor. Here's my labor cost. I get I get good labor, but you're saving a lot of money on parts. That's the number one thing. We'll say you take a risk with me, or I have to double and triple the parts. I mean, it costs God off a lot of money. People can't afford it. So if we take a risk to together, you trust my labor, which is always excellent. No comebacks, no no, no half-ass. I don't do that. I take my time, do it right one time, and I'm happy. You're happy. But... Uh, it's got, uh, mm, here's for the, here's for the, um, the clutch. Got to fill that out and 
check the mask, the slave cylinder and so forth. And I got one of those that goes over on the transmission. So we're going to do the clutch. But I told her, I said, you spent too much money, but that's fine. They got the job and I'm not, you know, hey, whatever. But I could have saved you a lot of money. Let's go over here and take a look. I don't want to put the plate in here. Let's go take a look at what I've seen here underneath the car. Okay. Here's the old CUDA 444 speed monster. I just put the 430 gear in it. Let's take a look here. <clears throat> and that's going to go under. So the camera's going to wibble or wobble a little bit. So just bear with me when I get underneath here. These smartphones. All right, we're underneath the car just about. So we're doing a fuel pump, right? She said the car ran before it, before they brought it here. I told her the fuel pump was burning up in it, and my diagnosis is right. It was spinning air. Is there any gas in that? You see any gas? There's no gas. But I can lift this pump up, this tank, with th two fingers. See that? Two fingers. One finger. There's no fuel in this tank. Plus, I got a big dent. They hit something here. I'm going to try to beat that out for them. I do it for free. No big deal. Ain't. Look at the tank's getting a little rust on the side. Uh, probably ought to ask her if she wants to get a new gas tank. Yeah, it's got quite a bit of rust. I'm going to ask her. I'm going to try to sand it. Do some repair on it. Because I like the lady. And I always go out of the way to fix this. Now, they got gas tank repair stuff. I can do that, but see, this is going to be a problem. This is going to leak real soon. A couple more winters, or one winter, who knows? It's going to leak. So I'm going to, I just now noticed that. So, hey, what is that? That looks like, some, that looks like somebody's face. <laughs> it's a rust face. Anyhow, so the tank, got no, the tank has no, fuel on it it didn't run when it came here and it was sputtering and spotting and and not running so anyhow i thought i'd show you that so the dent look at the converter see that converter see that dent now i'm not going to try to sell our converter because it's not that severe but theoretically that dent is enough to break a piece of a cone loose inside that converter and if it gets jammed or lodged up in exhaust, the exhaust has got to come down and beat it out. So I always try to go the extra mile for the customer. Say, hey, look, take a look what I found here. It may not have any problems whatsoever. We won't know until we start this car because this car didn't run when it got here. But I um, always go the extra mile and help the customer out, help people out, man. That's just what I do. I enjoy my job because I do it on my time frame. I take my time. I'm relaxed. I enjoy this. I love fixing cars now. Man, I did it with for shops. I did this for shops, and it was just miserable as, as all get out. Just miserable. I, I I used to dread going to work. They took I they destroyed something I love. Now I'm doing it. I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for the for you, the customer, whoever. And I I love it. I make a good wage. I produce an awesome product and you're not getting mark, uh, markup on parts a lot of times. Sometimes people want me to do it that way. You take care of all the costs. Say, okay. You buy the parts. We'll, we'll work together and and uh, you take a risk with me. You know, Napa's got better parts. The dealer's always the best choice. Napa's two. Advance is three and AutoZone's four, in my opinion. O'Reilly's five. But I Riley could be. I haven't used a Riley enough in a long time, so I got four I normally go to. So the dealer, Napa, Advance, or O'Reilly, and there's a there's bumper to bumper too. There's other people that sell parts. There's AC Delco on Morse Road, Columbus, Ohio. So anyhow, Craig's discount I repair. I thought I'd share that with you. Um, hopefully that uh, gives you a little insight. Now, I want to share something with you. Also, see these jack stands? Sometimes people complain. I want to be honest with you right up front. That way you know some people complain about prices are a little high. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I've had friends 
and I know people that weren't friends or acquaintances that had cars fall on them, and I know a couple of people that's been burnt up and, and then died. This stuff is dangerous. Fuel's dangerous to your eyes and body and skin. The oils are dangerous. Oils are extremely toxic. A lot of mechanics have gotten cancer. So keep this in mind. And that way you understand that this stuff isn't, you know, this isn't, uh, this is really hazardous material we're dealing with. These cars are they're dangerous on these jack stands. That's why I'm doing it right here, right now. So keep that in mind. Uh, but we work together and we produce something that's honorable and just. All right, it's Craig's Discount Auto Repair, and I am going to tap the tank one more time to let you know there's no fuel in this tank. Nothing at all. We're done here. I'll oh, got part two when I do the clutch. I'll show you the part two on the clutch. See you later.